doing this way is not because I want to elbow you, but I just want to give you a hug. God bless you. So, for the past weeks, we've been talking about something special. Deliverance. Thank you, Brother Joshua. We've been talking about deliverance. We've been, you know, digging deep into it. Deliverance is something that we all need. We all need to be delivered from one thing or the other. There's no saint. We are, all, we are not saint. We are all aspiring to be saint. Praise the Lord. And we are all, because we are still in flesh, this flesh sometimes still pushes us to do some things. Praise the Lord. And there are some things we, we find ourselves doing that we don't even know much about it. And we realize it's from it's the same thing that our forefathers suffered. Sorry. So the same thing that our forefathers, what they suffered, the same thing, you know, that we see happening in our lives. So we all need deliverance. Praise the Lord. So who can tell me what was our, um, our memory verse? We've been talking about this and during the DDC, pastor mentioned it. Our memory verse, Joshua. Obadiah 117 and says Amen. Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. And what? The house of Jacob shall possess their possession. And there we say something about the house of Jacob. Is it only the house of Jacob? And who, who's house again? Our house. House of covenant. Put your last name there. Put your family name there. That you shall possess your possession. And that is the prayer we all should pray. Pretty much almost every day. That Father, let me possess my possession. Let me possess my possession. Speak it out. Because what you speak is what you become. Praise the Lord. So today... And last week, I'm just, I just want to run it up for those of us that was not here last week. So last week, what did we say last week that we need to be delivered from? There was something that we could not finish last week. Sin, sin, hallelujah. We said we should be delivered from sin. And what did we say? I remembered Uncle how about say something about this about sin. Yes. 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 She's, he said if we sin, you can lose your salvation. Because God Himself This is funny. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, to be honest with you, the the I think it was like three weeks ago, you had asked the same question. And I had been wanting to uh, answer that in full. Amen. Uh, however, last night, God, well, to be honest, it was uh, Friday at work when God basically gave me a a little something to say concerning that it's it's been on my heart uh for the question that had been asked uh previously three weeks ago and then it was asked last week if we sin can we lose our salvation well i prepared a little something it just looks long i just i didn't have time to rewrite it that's why we are here. <laughs> so we can learn from each other. So if we sin, can we lose our salvation? The, the real question to that is, are you saved? Hmm. Some people think they are saved and they are not. 
and there lays your problem. A genuine conversion through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is eternal security. A genuine conversion penetrates the soul. And the Holy Spirit is able to reveal the mysteries to him. A man's conversion with his own understanding through Jesus Christ gives unsecurity. Salvation never penetrates the soul. Their conversions are only emotional and superficial. Only on the surface. That is why the enemy, the devil, comes and snatches whatever knowledge or understanding they may have of Christ. And those who want to take scriptures, write them down. It's Matthew chapter 13, 2 Peter 2, 20, Hebrews 3, 6 to 4, 3, 12 through 18. Okay, I'll slow down for you. Matthew chapter 13. Second Peter 2, 20. Hebrews chapter 3, 12 through 18. Chapter 6, 4 through 6, chapter 10, 26 to 31, as well as verse 38 to 39, 1 John 2, 19, and Luke 11, 24 to 26. We have an advocate. This advocate is also known as a mediator, a helper, a defense attorney. In 1 John 1, 8 through 2, 1 says that we can't deny sin. And if we do deny that we have sin in us, then we make him a liar. Mm -hmm. However, little children, he says, if you do sin, you have an advocate, the mediator, the lawyer, the defense attorney. It says Jesus pardoned us, gave us an acquittal of our sins through his blood. It was a propitiation. What's a propitiation? A sacrifice of Jesus' blood that satisfied the demands of his father. This was the holy justice mm -hmm. that saved us from sin. And that is the first, you can read 1 John 4, 10. First John 3, 1 through 9 says, His seed remains in us, and we cannot sin because we have been reborn of God. When the Father looks down on us, what does he see? He sees the blood of Christ. The grace of God. This is in Romans 5, 20, 6 through 4, 5, 20 through 614 says when sin abounded grace abounded much more to eternal life through our Lord so if grace abounded let us sin mm -hmm. God forbid it says for we are dead in sin and we have been baptized into his death we have been crucified with him and no longer slaves of sin. I also know we can lose our rewards. Because this comes up when people think that when we sin, we could lose our salvation. But we don't lose our salvation, but we do lose rewards. Does he, he want, I don't know about you, but he wants to, whatever Jesus Christ wants to give me, I want it. Mm -hmm. All of them. I want all of it. I don't want to lose nothing. All of them. And that, for the verses on that is Romans 2, 6. 1 Corinthians 3, 6 through 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 through 15. Revelations 2, 12. Matthew 25, 
14 to 30. 2 Corinthians 5.10 and 1 Corinthians 4.5. In Philippians 2.12, it says, work out your salvation. This is a misunderstood verse. There is only one verse in the strong concordance for this word work. In the strong accordance under the Greek word 2716, for those of you that want the Greek word, it reads accomplish or to perform. And in my spiral zodiac, the complete word study dictionary of the New Testament reads to produce, to practice, to operate. To carry out a task. To carry out what task? To carry out, to operate what? To produce what? To perform what? What Christ put in you already. It says in Ephesians, it tells us we know it's not of works because Ephesians tells us it's by the grace of God that we have been saved. It is through faith. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. I would also like to add the antonym of the Greek word work. Which says to neglect or to overlook. Are we neglecting? Are we overlooking? Or are we not understanding the salvation of the Lord? Are we not understanding what he did on the cross for us? What he put inside of us already? What he has already finished on the cross? Titus 3.5 tells us, not of works of righteousness, but of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. And having been justified by grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. What does grace mean? Unearned and undeserved gift of God. What does justification mean? To be made in right standing with God. What does sanctification mean? To be set apart from the world. And it's an ongoing process. Working out your salvation. And what does regeneration mean? To be reborn. Of the incorruptible seed. The seed that of God that remains in us forever. 2 Corinthians 5 says, 17 says, Old things have passed away. All things have become new. St. John 3, 3 to 8. Verily, verily, except a man be born again of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Put your hands together. Marvel, wow. almost done. Almost done. <laughs> wow, wow. Marvel not that I say Your unto you, must, you must be born of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 14, the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. For those who have been born of the Spirit, He has also sealed them for the day of redemption. 2 Corinthians 1, 22 and 5, 5. He has sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Ephesians 1, 13 to 14. 
you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the day of redemption of the purchased possession. Who's the purchased possession? We are. He purchased us already. It's done. It's a guarantee. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20. Or do you not know that your bodies is the temple of the Holy Spirit and that you are not your own? It says, for you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 2 Timothy 2.19 The solid foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are His. St. John 10, 27-30 reads. I'm going to read these next three verses. Wow, I feel like clapping for Him. <laughs> my, my, clap for the Lord. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. And my Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. First Peter. Chapter 1, 3 to 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept, by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 12, 22 to 24. But you, this reminds me of Kimmy, but you, <laughs> having come to Mount Zion and to the city of, of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of the sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. In Romans chapter 8, he called us, he foreknew us, he predestined us, he conformed us to the image of his son. He justified us, he sanctified us, he glorified us. What then? If God is for us, who can be against us? What can separate us from God? Nothing. He did not even spare his own son for us. We then are more than conquerors through him. Amen. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right, it's my last page. Amen. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19 says, This hope we have as an anchor of our soul, both sure and, stand, and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil. Who can enter the presence behind the veil if you are not covered with the blood of Christ? <laughs> Philippians 1.6 says, He who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 11. This is my last verse. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the things for which I sent it. 
If we sin, can we lose our salvation? No, we can't. Amen. Wow. If we sin, can we lose our salvation? But if you still remain in that sin, that's possibly, there's no way if you remain sinning, the spirit of God will flee away from you, definitely. If you remain a sinner, it's knowing that you're a sinner and you walk yourself away from sin, then your salvation will be intact. But if you remain a sinner, you cannot enter the kingdom of God being a sinner. Okay. But that, my question is, so then that's why some people take the grace of God for granted. Taking the grace of God for granted. Right? Because some people, all I need to do is just nail down and ask God for forgiveness and he will forgive me. Praise the Lord. But do you, are you, is it, isn't it taking the grace of God for granted at that point? That, that, I like that. Actually, let's open our Bible to you said something about it. Romans chapter 6 verse 14. We read it 14 to 19 briefly. It's by his grace that we've been saved. But then we cannot remain in sin and have uh, the grace of God have to abound. Praise the Lord. So we cannot continually knowing fully well because some some people they've done it so they are so good at it that all they they just say don't worry my god is a faithful father it's a loving king father it's a loving king all i need to do is go to him and he will forgive but let's put herself let's use herself as uh i my that's my daddy pastor bear is my daddy and i always go Still, 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 still. And immediately I finished stealing. I said, Dad, I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm sorry. I, I, I just finished stealing. Come back. Maybe 20 minutes ago again. The, the same, the same thing. I kept doing the same thing. Won't, Pastor Barry, won't you, won't you be upset or? Uh, I'll... Praise the Lord. Uh, very briefly. I think there, there are many things that are happening to the lives of people. And we must, and that's why we're having this lesson of deliverance. Mm -hmm. This is a very important lesson, and we need to stay focused on it. Because there are people who are possessed, and there are people who are intentional sinners. Intentional there, and, and, sinner and there are people, and possessed sinners. Yes, and there are people who are living in, in ignorance. And they may want to do good, but they end up doing bad people. things. Or... Doing good the wrong way. Hmm. He, he just talked about uh, God re removing you from, from, the, from, the, from the world if you're a sinner. Mm -hmm. Remember the story of Uzzah in the Bible. Mm -hmm. This man was going to protect the Ark of the Covenant from falling down. So he was doing good, good the but wrong the wrong time. way. Yes. Because God said, don't touch the Ark of the Covenant. So some people die out of the sins because of ignorance they even don't know that what they are doing is you might be trying to do good but in god's in the go in, in in god's uh, according to god's uh, will we must do good according to his word not doing good according to your own understanding when you begin to do things in your own understanding whether good or bad it ends up becoming sin 
There is sin by commission and sin by omission. We commit some sins and some sins we, we do by not doing what we are supposed to do. Now, deliverance now, why we are, we, are, we are doing this lesson is because there are people. You end up seeing them doing things you can't even, even imagine. And you ask them, I thought we prayed for you yesterday. I thought we canceled you. <laughs> he went back and did the same, same thing. So we need to understand what is happening. Is this person an intentional sinner? Or is this person it's living? Are they demons? So when, when, when that happens, then you start wondering, like he said, I'll pick it up from where it stops. And that's when you start wondering, is this really normal, demonic, or intentional sinner? There are some things, look at, look at um, somebody that said, oh, well, I just, I just cannot stop doing drugs. I can't do it. I, I, every time you just come, today he's on his knees crying, God forgive me, blah, blah, blah. We pray that we, you know, well, I'm, I, I, I'm done. I'm not going to go back to my old uh, puke. I'm not going to do that no more. Then guess what? Three days later, we found you all doing the same thing and you all messed up. And you began to see. And by the time you now look back, you realized your mom went through the same thing. She still had drug, uh, uh, drug him. Your dad went through the same thing. Your brother went through the same thing. Your cousin went through the same thing. And it's, as a matter of fact, all your siblings. Then you now see why you need to really... It's not about the habits now. It's about being possessed. Praise the Lord. So it's been, it's been transferred to you. Then you really need more than just staying away from it. Then you really need to be delivered from that demonic habit. Now it's demonic. It's not just, it's not just an habit that, okay, I'm just, you know, you just go something. You, just, you, just, you need more prayer than just saying from your mouth, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to stay away from this. I'm just going to stay away from this. If you've been delivered, then the spirit of God will now overshadow you. Then you begin to start seeing. As a matter of fact, you'll be so allergic to it. You will, every time, every time the thing want to come near you, you just like, no, 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 no. I, I can't, no, 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 no. You, you feel irritated. You know that God has actually delivered you. Praise the Lord. The, the, the Roman chapter 6, verse 14, briefly, that I wanted to read earlier. It says, for sin we have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. Are you? My glasses. Okay. And what then? Are we to sin because we are not under law, but under grace? So my thing to you this morning, don't take the grace of God for granted. So when you see it, it might be demonic. It might be you are just, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, what is that? Um, um, no, you are just, um, what is this? Something I want to say. Intentional sinner that you just, you know, let, let's say you are an adulterer. You love women so much that you can, everything that wears cat, you want to touch. It, it, it doesn't even matter if it's he, all it needs to do is to wear skirts and you're ready to go. It does not matter. And by the time you're done, you come back again and ask God for forgiveness. The same thing. The same thing. Over and over again. Then you know this is more than just a sin. It's more it's demonic. Then you need to be delivered from it. Praise the Lord. So we talked about deliverance from sin, deliverance from ourselves. And uh, my, my note in this note, it says, the heritage and relational discussions. Those are the things that we get from our parents or maybe from the bloodline, things that we need to be delivered from. Could be, it could be you know, like Pastor Sophie said a couple of weeks ago, some people when they want to, oh, I'm in love with you. I, I can't do without you. But we, you need to, we need to make a, we need to have a commitment. I need to know, you, you need to give me something that will make me believe that you are for me for life. Some people will cut their hand and they will do a blood, um, um, what's it called? Covenant with each other. 
They say, don't take some of my blood, and I take so that if you dare cheat on me, then this will be chasing you. Praise the Lord. Some people, they, they, some people have really got to that level. Some common tattoo. Put my tattoo. That, that was canceling somebody. Then they now said, what am I going to do with this tattoo? It's all over me. I put that name all over me. So I can't, I can't, I can't see. Praise the Lord. Oh, but another woman now see me with this tattoo and her name on it. So how does that sound? So because of the tattoo, now he is in trouble with it. This is a toxic relationship, but you have the name written all over you. Now you are stuck. Praise the Lord. So there's some things, decisions that we need to be very, very careful. Well, pastor, I've done this in the past. Now I'm a new creature. How do I clean up? And there's something that you need to, once you are delivered, you will, your mind will not go there right any longer. Praise the Lord. You'll be, pastor. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because, but those are the things it's common that we find ourselves doing. Some people would just say, just mere word. You say, you know what? I will forever stay with you. You make that covenant. You make that vow. You call the host of heaven that was there that day. The day you now want to rebuke, you don't know, I, I fall out of love. You were falling in love before. Now you are falling out of love. There's no more honey in the moon. So you completely dried off the honey. Then now you now say, you know what? I'm just, I'm done with you. I can't do this no more. But what now happened to the covenant that you guys made together? So those are the things that we need to be delivered from. It just, the word, that's why our words are so powerful. Very, very powerful. Praise the Lord. So we need to be delivered from that. And we need to be delivered from occultive involvement. There's some things you it just you 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 find yourself you, you know it's it's um how do I explain this? Occultive involvement like like gang related thing you know you 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 are you are the front leader you just want to do it but by the time you realize it's really you've shed so many bloods you've shed so you've destroyed so many lives you've hurt so many families on all this thing now you you if you don't look back and ask god for if you don't be if you are not delivered from me it will go it start affecting your own entire generations and there's some some of us are you know, suffering from what our, what our forefather had done. Praise the Lord. Pastor Sophie. Yeah, and then when we talk about occultic involvement, it has come into the church. Hmm. Yeah, so there are the, some occult groups, they call themselves a church, and they preach the Bible, but they are practicing occultism. So people are blinded because they cannot see and it's because people are chasing after miracles they want to hear what they ear, their ears want to hear and so these these guys are taking advantage of these hungry souls desperate souls and so they you 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 enter into an organization you think it's a church you don't, not knowing that it's an occultic group. And that things that happen there, and sometimes people, people who are outside are seeing, but the people who are inside, they can't see it. They can't see like it's wrong. Can you imagine pastor just telling you, go outside and start eating grass. And all of you run outside and you lay down and start eating grass. And that is, they are, they're coming, he reads the Bible and tells them, go and eat grass. And they push each other, go start eating grass. I saw another one, this is very, this is, this, this is very, very annoying. I saw another, another, another clip. People, pastor praying for, the, for, the, for women, telling the women to remove their, their underwear so that you can pray for them at the altar. Can you imagine? And this is the things that, and people call it church, they go to worship. So we, when we're talking about this, we are not even, we should not even be talking about the things that are happening in the world. This thing has crept into the church and it, it is deforming the name of Christ. It is deforming the true 
church, the, the true body of Christ, and we have to be very careful about it. Be very, very, very. I was going to say, I was sitting at home uh, last night thinking, I, was, I read some reading when he was talking about sanctification. You know, they say I'm weird. Yes, I am, because I'm weird because I love the Lord, and I'm going to stay there. You know, I've been there a long time. But, you know, I see so much going on in these churches, as Sister was saying, uh, that, uh, you know, people bringing stuff in the church. There's people already in the church sitting up here paying big money, you know, in the church and stuff, trying to get into a higher position in the church. And, and money has been a root of all evil in all churches. I've been in churches 45 years, and I've been seeing these things, you know. You, you pay more, you get a higher rank, you know. <laughs> How you going to get a rank in, in the Lord? But the Lord is not satisfied until the head really see what, see these people that they are putting in a position because you got to be careful because you, you can't have everybody in the position that don't know the Lord because you're going to run people away from the church. And I've been seeing this for years. And, like, they called me, well, you a prophet, you an evangelist. I said, I'll wait until God tell me who I am. I don't wait on man to do nothing, tell me anything, you know, because only God could do what he say he's going to do for me. And I, I about know what he want me to be, but... There's a lot that don't want me to be there because I'm going to tell the truth. If it hurts you, good, because it's going to hurt, help you if I hurt you with the word, okay? And the truth shall set you free. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we see going back to the occultive involvement. And some people, like Pastor said, I just don't want us to be distracted from it. They are looking for prophet, prophecy. Can you prophesy? Can you tell me what my life is going to be in the future? And now if you click on the TV, on the news, on social media, even the young boy that just, that just born yesterday, yeah. now it's, it's, it's a prophet. I'm a prophet. I'm a prophet. I'm a, it's the name that's everywhere. Some people, they just, you just I just saw this brother. He was just minister. So, 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 so. Now on Facebook. It's prophet, so, 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 so. Praise the Lord. They just, and once, and because why? Because people now, the attention is away completely from the throne of grace. It's away from Jesus Christ itself. It's away from the truth, 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 that, the truth the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, the attention is to, for somebody to tell me how my, my lunch is going to be tomorrow. How do you think, uh, um, when I walk out of this day, how do you think this is going to happen to me? Or, or do you think this one's going to, they're just looking for miracles, 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 miracles. Because they are looking for miracles, guess what? And, they are, and the people and the devil is taking advantage of that and using the church as an avenue to cover, to put a veil on everybody's vision. So you are not even seeing what's going on, but what, you are, what we are seeing is the miracle of the occultive, occultive group that they are pretending to be manifesting under the anointing of the Most High God. Praise the Lord. So we need to be very, 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 very careful. It's all over. Some people are looking for children. Oh, don't worry. The bishop will say that the new prophet will say, don't worry. All I need to do, come to my house. If when I sleep with you one time, you don't have to tell nobody, you will have baby. Praise the Lord. It's so many things. And they will say, that is a prophetic word for you. And they will say, <laughs> when they say that's prophetic word for you, everybody, because they are so deceived, they don't even know the power that's in the name of Jesus Christ. And they follow through. And guess what? And the person, now I'm pregnant. Hey, my prophet said I would be pregnant. But what happened? Praise the Lord. Whatever happened, she couldn't tell. 
I know somebody very well in LA. That was the same thing that happened to you. She has been wanted to have a child for so long. So long. So long. Now this new prophet came in town and told her, don't worry, you don't have to. We're going to do seven days prayer together. You just, you meet me at the hotel. You don't tell your husband because I know your husband is going to walk against this. Don't worry, we'll make it happen. And this is how they are using the name of Jesus Christ to abuse people. They will abuse them mentally. They will abuse them physically. Yeah, they will still get what they are looking for. But how? Praise the Lord. So, our courtive involvement, be very, 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 very careful. People are seeking protection out of protection of Christ. If God says you're going to die tomorrow, so, so be it. Why, why, why? Maybe, maybe it's for your own goodness. Why are you running away? I was telling somebody, I said, there's nothing anybody can do. Me, if you want to kill me, if definitely, if that's the day I am assigned to die, no matter what it is. But if the purpose of God, if I have not completed and finished my race, they, no, no, there's no weapon formed against me that will prosper. Praise the Lord. There are the time we need to stand firm and knowing who we are, know, believe in the word of God, and stand firm, believe in it. Don't worry about somebody is going to kill me. This is going to, if it's assigned, the Bible says if you're assigned for one, once to die. If it's that's your day, you're already assigned to it. That is why you need to live a godly life because your own trumpet must sound at any time. So stop looking for protection everywhere. Go do this for protection. Well, I have to do this for protection. Some people are doing some crazy stuff to even harm their own health because of protection. Praise the Lord. Sister. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to quickly say that a lot of us who are gullible or fall into become praise to a man of God like this is because we do not have a working relationship with God. When Jesus called the apostles, he didn't send them out. The Bible says he was, they were called to be with him first. You, they, they were with him, they learned his ways to the point that everywhere they went to, people pointed at them and said, these men have been with Christ. When Jesus was going to um, walk up to the cross and give up his life. He told Peter ahead of time that Peter was going to deny him. And when that time came, Peter was not accused only because Jesus' prophecy came to pass, but because he was seen mingling with Christ. He had a life, he had an attitude of Christ that, that, you know, that was displayed in his character. The Bible said in, in, um, in Psalm 103 verse 7 that God made his ways known to Moses, but his act was made known to the children of Israel. That means that the way God does his miracles, the way God goes about his agenda and strategies, Moses knew it because he was with God. But the children of Israel only saw the miracles. Moses knew from the womb where the miracles were performed. He was with God. God made his ways known to him so when we when like I, I mentioned last week when we give our life to christ we do not take the time to repent that you accept jesus today does not automatically mean that the entire scene of your life god forgives your sin but there are still traits you still have the ability to commit that sin again you have the ability to kill you have the ability to steal you have the ability to drink it is your spirit that had an encounter with god not your flesh that is why as my, my, uh, our brother said this morning, Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, you have to work out your salvation. There is, there is um, a requirement of you as a believer to go to God every day and study the word of God. It is the word of God that regenerates your mind. It is the word of God that gives... Is, okay, let me give this example. If you come back home to, today after fellowship and you want to cook... You may want to prepare fried rice, but you don't have the condiments and you really need to cook. But if you find any other condiment that can make jollof rice, you cook it. If you find any other thing that can make it stew, you cook it. Why? Because you have to cook. Now, it may not be fried rice because there are not enough condiments. So, the Holy Spirit cannot do anything in the life of a believer that is not filled with the word of God. Because the word of God that you give yourself to daily 
that enables the spirit of God to do something in your life. When that spirit of stealing, because the devil knows that we are men and we are prone to falling. So if you're not, if you, if you're not, if you're not chiseled by the word of God, when, when, when the devil comes, you will fall. But if somewhere in your spirit, you've given yourself to the word, when the devil comes to take you out of what you believe the spirit of god comes to weigh a war against it the bible said in isaiah 59 verse 19 it said when the devil comes in like a flow the enemy the spirit of god will raise a standard the spirit of god will not raise a standard in a man that is empty because god will not do anything outside the jurisdiction of his word if the spirit of god comes and say thou shalt not steal you know that it is thou shalt not steal but you don't know where it is found in the scripture god depends on his word he said if heaven and earth will pass away one jot of his word will never fail isaiah 55 11 also said that the word that comes out of his mouth cannot return to him void the word of god has to prevail it is because we don't know what god says that is why if i show up today and say mommy you're going to be pregnant tomorrow you start jumping up and down oh maybe i said i'll be pregnant because she's a prophetess but that's not what god said about you mommy said this morning i don't want to know what you say i want to know what god says about me i had an encounter with a prophet in new jersey somebody called me and said oh um i want you to attend the program and minister in songs it was this prophet i didn't know him and at the time i wasn't my faith wasn't strong what i do what i would do now and i never used to do it then i never prayed to find out if it was god's permission for me to attend the program i was zealous without knowledge i was zealous without understanding so I went for the program and I ministered and at the end of the mini meeting, the man of God came and told me, Oh, God bless you. You did wonderfully well. And we want you to come to New Jersey. I was excited. And I, I told a friend of mine, I said, let's go together. So we go, we, we went to the program and then he said, um, he sent somebody to me and said, I would like to see you at this time of the day. Um, I think it was like in the evening. So I told my friend, the prophet said he wants to see me. Let's go. We're together in the same hotel room. And then when we went there, he first of all attended to my friend. And then when I came in, the first thing he asked me was, why did you go with your friend? Why did you go with your friend? I was like, I said, sir, I, I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't know anywhere in New Jersey. And I came all the way from Los Angeles. There's no way I could have left without coming with a friend. You know, you should have left her. You should have, I'm, I'm sorry to say some, some things here. And... I, this your, this your dress is fine. Is, is, is this your breasts? It looks so full. It looks so full. And I said, thank you, sir. Can I leave now? He said, okay, I know you're uncomfortable. I just want to, you know, um, appreciate the work of God. Now, this same man of God, this same man of God has, has women. When I say women, you would think he's called to the, to, to the women ministry. He has women flocking him around. And when I went into that place, what I began to do was to discern in the spirit. The Bible said in 1 John chapter 2 verse 20 that we have received an unction from the Lord and we know all things. So there is a knowing ability in the, in the life of a believer that is facilitated by the hand of the Holy Spirit. So I began to survey in the spirit. Why are these women flocking this man? What does he offer them? Some of them are married. Some of them were probably divorced. Some of them are single. But it was a heavy crowd of women flocking around him. But my investigation, I found out he has slept with virtually 95% of them. And they have been placed in a state where they can't pull out because of shame, because of mockery, because of what he would do to them. So every woman that comes into that ministry is a target. And I was a heavy target. I was literally running back around his bed because they assigned me as one of the people that you know you know they, they praise you the bible says jesus did not give himself to to men because he knows the heart of all men so when they applaud him he knows why they're applauding him he knows what they're about to do they assign me as one of the they say you are you are very the, the pastor likes people that are spirit filled and he has said that when you minister he feels the presence of god so we don't want to send any help people to his hotel you go and serve him this thing and I went there in the, in, the, in the boldness of Christ. And he told me. And I got there. He was wearing a robe. He took it off. He said, if you see my nakedness, I will see your nakedness. I said, you can't see my nakedness. I come in the name of the Lord. I will, I will scream. And I was screaming in that room. Help! 
rape. He was chasing me around the room. This is what people do. And I don't know what he does to people that he sleeps with. But when he sleeps with them, they don't speak. Because of fear. And they still follow him. That means there's a possibility that after that encounter occurs, he leaves something with them. That will make them not to speak. And then when I came out of that room, women from the ministry started coming after me. They came with attack. They came physically. They came spiritually. So we are not, we don't spend time enough with God to know that even though this man is performing miracles, the Bible called him a revelation. That is the, I think it's a frog spirit. Mm-hmm. We, we know that they perform miracles. We know that, you know, they do great and mighty things. But at the end of the day, what spirit backs the performance? What spirit triggers? What spirit, you know, brings those miracles to pass? Because the Bible said in James chapter 2 that even the devil believes and he trembles. He said, if you believe, you do well. But the devils believe and they tremble. They do miracles. They do signs. They can call fire from heaven. They can make the elect to even think that this is, this is God in action. If you don't have the spirit to discern. Exactly. We, don't, we don't spend it. If I spend so much time with you, I will know what you are able to do. Yeah. I will know your weakness. I will know your strength. If we spend time with God, we will know that even though this is a miracle, it is not coming from God. It is not of God. That would rather be my advice that we should spend time with God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wow. (laughs) I wanted to explain more about the time. I I mean, I, I I don't want to get in trouble. So please, we'll continue next week. We'll continue the occultive involvement. Things that, you know, that we see like she explains and i have so many testimonies too that i want to share with us on next week by the grace of god so we do the occultive we finish that one and we finish the sexual sin that we need to be delivered from and god will help us in the name of jesus christ i will ask pastor to pray for us and so father we thank you for this gathering we bless your name we thank you for who you are. We thank you for those testimonies. We thank you for, for, the, for the knowledge that we've received this morning. We ask you, oh Lord, this day that you continue to guide us and give us a spirit of discernment in the name of Jesus Christ. We will not fall a victim any longer in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, Holy Ghost, thy Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead will come and penetrate into us in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Holy Spirit, you are our comforter. Father, we pray that you continue to comfort us, you continue to be with us, you continue to protect us, you continue to guide us in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit, as we go in this service holy spirit you go with us in the mighty name of jesus christ take control of today's service in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen and amen wow put your hands together and let's welcome everybody as we get ready for this service